Antarctica, the highest, driest, coldest, and windiest continent on Earth, covers an area of 14.2 million square kilometers. That's twice the size of Australia and larger than the US and Mexico combined. This spectacular land at our planet's south pole is one of the most challenging yet most rewarding places to visit in the world. And lucky for us, we just returned from exploring this amazing continent with Lindblad Expeditions aboard their brand new National Geographic Endurance. And we're going to tell you all about our experience on this episode of A Cup of Joe with Go. Welcome to A Cup of Joe with Go, your source for everything travel, brought to you by Go Travel. I'm Rosie. I'm Susan. And I'm Julia. In a second, we are going to explore some of the highlights of their recent Antarctica journey. But first, we need to give you a quick introduction to the Lindblad Expeditions brand. If you've joined us in the past, you know how much we love travel experiences that tie in with history. So while there are a handful of expedition brands out there offering Antarctica, Lindblad by far has the longest historical roots in the region. With a mission to introduce travelers to the wildest and most remote destinations in the world, the brand's founder, Lars Erik Lindblad, pioneered the first tourist expedition to Antarctica in 1966. He soon followed with more industry firsts throughout the 60s and 70s, taking adventurous tourists to the Galapagos, Seychelles, the Amazon, and Arctic. Widely regarded as the father of ecotourism, Lars Erik instilled his passion for exploration and preservation into his son, Sven Olaf Lindblad who continues in a leadership role today with the company. Strengthened by its partnership with National Geographic, Lindblad Expeditions is more than a tourism company. It is a global leader in overseas adventure with a maintained focus on continued learning, research, preservation, and heritage. Now, this all sounds nice, but tangibly, what does it really mean? You're gonna see for yourself as we go through the expedition experience right now. So let's get to it. While I didn't go on this fabulous adventure, I certainly had fun watching these two get ready for it, especially figuring out what to pack. Yes, it was quite a challenge. Lindblad did give us a thorough packing list, but I'm a Floridian. And I'm a Texan, but we figured it out. And as soon as we returned, we put together a video with our top Antarctica packing tips. So be sure to check that out if you are planning to travel there anytime soon. So we flew from Miami to Santiago and then on to Ushuaia, Argentina, the southernmost tip of South America. And that's where we transferred to meet our ship for embarkation the National Geographic Endurance. Which is Lindblad's brand new ice class expedition ship that just launched in July 2021. The ship's most striking exterior feature is her distinctive profile, the patented X-Bow. The reverse of a conventional bow, the X-Bow leaning backwards instead of forwards is able to distribute force more evenly across its surface, eliminating the impact and guaranteeing the smoothest, most comfortable ride in all kinds of conditions. The ship, limited to just 126 guests, was modern, new, made for expedition travel with all its amenities. After boarding the ship, we went to the ice lounge for our safety briefing, and off we went. Right after departing, we passed through the Beagle Channel, and a rainbow appeared. What a send-off! Over the next two days, we made our journey through the Drake Passage, the massive body of water between South America's Cape Horn, Chile, and the South Shetland Islands of Antarctica. A cool fact, the Drake Passage is actually referred to as 
Mar de Joses in Spanish speaking countries, as it was first sailed and hence discovered by Francisco de Joses in 1525, 50 years before Sir Francis Drake. Given that the currents at this latitude meet no resistance from any landmass, the Drake Passage is considered one of the most treacherous voyages a ship can make. And boy, did we make it. <laughs> Quite the journey. We noticed the swells about uh, 10 p.m. last night after dinner. The ship started rocking and rolling. Man, uh, the room was going up and down. <laughs> <laughs> but as we understand, this is nothing. This is a calm passing. But anyway, just checking in. On day three, we pass through the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, the most important current in the Southern Ocean, and the only current that flows completely around the globe. Once you move past this boundary, temperatures drop significantly, and you enter a brand new ocean. That day, we also went through the biosecurity process, checking to make sure we aren't bringing any seeds, grasses, soils, accidentally on the bottoms of our shoes, clothes, anything that might interfere with Antarctica's pristine environment. They told us as well, when we got to land, for example, we could build a snowman, but we had to put it back, fully disassemble the snowman before leaving the island because we wanted to keep the land as close to untouched as possible in an effort to preserve the natural environment. Something unique about traveling to Antarctica is that no two expeditions will ever be the same. You'll have a general idea of the region you will be visiting and you'll know the number of days, but the actual route and destination will be completely up to the weather and conditions you encounter. So for us, days three through eight were listed in the brochure simply as Exploring Antarctica with an example map. You are in the hands of your captain or ice master as they are referred to on Lindblad. And then the expedition leader searches good landing sites to see the penguins, seals, and other animal life. Since it's a new surprise every day, which adventure you will be taking, we were really excited when they announced that we would be crossing the Antarctic Circle the first time this ship would ever cross it. And of course, we had a champagne celebration on deck as we crossed. So much fun. Oh, there's the line. <laughs> this also marks a significant part of our journey as from here south, we would have nearly 24 hours daylight. On day four, we made our first landing in Antarctica at Red Rock Ridge. This is where we had our only wet landing of the trip. Oh boy. We moved to land via Zodiac and took our first step onto Antarctica. And then our feet all got wet because we didn't wear the right clothes that day. Yeah. Well, here we are. We made step foot on the seventh continent of the world. So here we are, truly on land, not an island, but on Antarctica. We, we thought we'd check in from, from the other side of the world. <laughs> or from the bottom of the world. From the bottom, yeah, yeah not the well, other side. The lowest point of the world. It is there where we began to learn about the local penguins from the Lindblad team. Later that same day, we also had a second landing at Jenny Island on the Antarctic Peninsula, where we first encountered southern elephant seals. Now, throughout your expedition, you're accompanied by a team of experts, ideally suited to lead your adventure. Lindblad Expeditions and National Geographic handpick these scientists, naturalists, and historians to share their knowledge and insights throughout the journey. In addition to leading the guests, you'll notice many of them working in the early hours, working on their own science and environmental projects, from gathering camera footage of the changing environment, 
going on diving expeditions to record developments of undersea life, to collecting samples of penguin poop. There are penguinologists, seal experts, undersea specialists, animal behaviorists, ecologists, you name it. Plus a National Geographic photographer and videographer. On our expedition, in addition to the other experts, we were honored to be also joined by Tom Ritchie, who has a history of working in the field of expedition cruising almost since its inception by Lars Lindblad. If I had these instructors as professors in college, I would have paid a lot more attention. They were just so excited about their field of study and we learned so many interesting facts. And what's great, each evening we gather in the ice lounge and the experts would give talks about things they discovered that day, explaining more in detail about everything we saw. It really brought everything in full circle. And we loved the setup being it was 360 degree lounge with individual monitors throughout the room so everyone had a front row seat to the visuals. And most importantly, the lectures were paired with cocktails. Day five, we spent the morning at Porcupa Island, exploring the bay, learning all about various types of ice, like glacier ice, sea ice, and brash ice, and different shapes including icebergs, glaciers, and ice sheets, all containing their own formation stories. Day six, we visited Damoy Point. There we got to see a rescue hut that had previously been owned by the British Antarctic Survey in the early 70s. Rescue huts are used in case of emergency, a place where someone can find provisions and shelter. There we were also able to see some Gentoo penguins. Back at the ship, the captain came on during dinner and announced we would be making an ice landing at Wilhelmina Cove. So we're going to ram into the ice. This is totally normal, but this is a warning. There will be a little impact. After that, some of the staff and crew are going to test the strength of that ice. And we do hope to get you out for a little ice walk. Uh, please wait for any further announcements about whether that's safe to you. And join us watching from bow viewing spaces. I was so excited. We quickly went to our room and dressed, got all in our garb, and went to the front of the ship and went out and watched as the captain plowed into this ice shelf. And it was so exciting. There were so many people that had come up behind us and we're all watching this as we plow in and crunch the ice. And then we just stopped, it just stuck. And this is probably something you can only do with that X bow. It's very difficult with other so. ships, yeah, right? I would think so. Yes. And then he announced anybody that wants to get off, come on. So we went back to our room and put on our clothes. Not that many because it was a quick trip. And <laughs> we put on our coats and uh, quickly ran to the front of the ship and went at a new entrance we didn't even know they had. And uh, when we go down the steps, there they have a path carved out, but it's only like a person and a half wide. And of course there's people already out on the ice shelf and some of them are starting to come back. So as we go by them, we sort of have to do a little turn, <laughs> hugging them, and <laughs> so we don't fall over in that cold ice and snow that's all, all around us. But we made it out to the front of the ship and that's where we did our, our pull of the ship. They had a rope. On the, on the bow that came down so that people could pose for fun pictures looking like we were pulling the ship 
into the ice. Over our yes, shoulder, was, man. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. We had our photo op. We did that. Yeah, we had a crew out there. And let me have your camera, Rosie. Let me take your picture. Oh, so it was it was really fun. Yeah, that it, it sounds so cool that you could just take your ship and say, hey, we feel like here right now, and we're gonna just plow <laughs> right in. And this yeah. was this was also about nine nine thirty in the evening, and of course it's daylight. We don't know if it's day or night. We just know we're on the ice, so we go <laughs> running out there. But um, a lot of daylight. And what's interesting is this ice shelf, there's actually no land underneath it. No. It's just water. So the big question, you're probably wondering, what is it that you're stepping on there? Because it doesn't, there's not land under there, <laughs> no. is there? The Antarctic ice sheet is the largest on Earth, containing 60 to 90% of the world's fresh water. At the same time, Antarctica is technically a desert due to its low annual precipitation, only just over 10 millimeters over the past 30 years. So if that's the case, how did all of the ice get there? Scientists estimate it has taken 45 million years to grow to its current thickness. Day seven at Hidden Bay, we could see Una's Peaks guarding the entrance of the Lemaire Channel. Amazing as we took these zodiacs through all the ice, the sounds, the views, all of it. Unbelievable landscapes. This moment you really feel, wow, I'm here. I'm in Antarctica. Another thing we haven't mentioned is there is a 24 seven open bridge aboard Lindblad Expedition Ships, a perfect place to get the best view when we forge ahead through the White Continent. There were even some humpback whales spotted during our journey. That same day, we had a gorgeous evening at the Enterprise Islands. As we cruised through Foyne Harbor, we saw the infamous wreckage of the Governoran. In the early 1900s, this ship functioned as one of the largest whaling factory ships of her time. Because floating factories like Governoran were designed as places for whaling process from start to finish, the crew was capable of rendering entire whales into oil and other valuable commodities. These factory ships carried large boilers with enormous tanks for storing the oil. This particular ship was known for once producing more than 22,000 gallons of oil. In 1915, as the whaling mission for the season wrapped up, the crew threw a deck party below deck. Someone, perhaps while dancing too boisterously, knocked a lamp off a table and the ship caught fire. The Governoran was of course full of thousands of gallons of whale oil and the ship exploded. And you can imagine the ship caught fire and all the people jumped off the ship because all these other ships had come up to come to the party, everybody <laughs> dove off the ship and swam to these other ships and all 85 crew members plus the party goers were safe. No one died. And now we get to see this neat piece of history. Beyond the shipwreck, we of course saw more penguins jumping around and gorgeous landscapes of icebergs and evening skies. On day eight, we moved to Nico Harbor. Whenever we have a landing, the Lindblad team first goes out to prepare the landing spot. So we got out there, penguins, 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 everywhere. One thing to remember when you go on your expedition, usually you will go out about twice a day. Never skip an opportunity. Even if you are tired or cold, at least get yourself out on the Zodiac and see what's going on. If you don't feel like stepping out onto land, you can just stay on the Zodiac. But get out there every time and see. You don't want to kick yourself later for skipping something because every time you go out, you will see something new and just amazing. We just returned from our excursion today and it's our last full day in Antarctica before the ship starts heading north to Ushuaia. <laughs> so this is how you look when you come back. 
Aren't we lovely? <laughs> We've taken our, our jackets off with hoodies, our neck scarves, and we thought, you know, this would be a good um, a memory for our trip, uh, showing people what you really look like when you come back <laughs> <laughs> from, from uh, an, an excursion. excursion. Well, that afternoon, it was time for the polar plunge. We didn't partake, but it was fun to watch. We had a great view from our cabin. We stepped out onto our balcony and watched from above. Maybe we'll do it on our next trip to Antarctica. Well, it sounds like the overall experience that you had, well, how would you describe it? The overall experience was just incredible. Yes, it wasn't like any type of cruise, it's an expedition. And we've learned so many unique things about Antarctica. It was so wonderful. It's something different than anything we'd ever been on before. I'd say it was a trip of a lifetime. We have to go back. Yes, we do. Now, if you are looking to travel to Antarctica, Lindblad Expeditions offers a few Antarctic itinerary options. First, of course, is the itinerary that these two experienced, Journey to Antarctica, the White Continent, 14 days. Another that's slightly longer, Antarctica, South Georgia, and the Falklands, 24 days. Next, we have Antarctica and Patagonia, legendary ice and epic fjords, 20 days. And finally, if you want to literally cross the world, there is epic Antarctica, from peninsula to the Ross Sea and beyond, 35 days, taking you from South America through Antarctica all the way to New Zealand. So now the big question is, which one to choose? When you are ready to start planning, reach out to us at gotravel.com and we will connect you with an expedition specialist who will guide you through your entire decision-making and planning process. Plus, not to mention, they'll be able to give you special access to any current specials on top of any potential bonus amenities we may have available for your specific departure. With these exclusive limited capacity expedition ships, space is extremely limited. You really wanna be planning at least a year or more in advance to secure your space. Thanks for joining us today on our adventure to Antarctica. And be sure to subscribe. See you next time for another cup of Joe with Go.